Damn. No light. Okay. Mm, these are just readers that you buy at the second thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Once upon a time, once upon a time there lived a woodcutter and his wife. Their early days were lived in bliss. That means happiness. In a small wood cottage with their two children, Hansel and Gretel. These two children grew up to be wise beyond their years. Hansel was smart, soft, and charming. Where Gretel was po poetic, cautious, but quick-witted. The two children loved to skip stones in the lake half a mile over. You know what skipping stones is, right? I've never done it, but skipping stones is where you take a, a little rock or a pebble and shit, and you throw it up against the lake, you know, on the lake, and I guess it bounces off the top of it or whatever. You never seen it in movies? That's okay. I didn't see that much movies either. Um, Hansel and Gretel spent most of their time finding the perfect flattest skipping stones. Uh, oh, shit. Hold on. Okay. Their collection of stones was large. They collected a bunch of rocks. <laughs> At least they didn't smoke them. Okay. Um, as they spent more time collecting stones than, than actually skipping the rocks. Over time, they had acquired a strange companion. A bird who would steal their stones and hide them in various places all over the land. I've heard of birds stealing shiny shit, you know, and like raccoons stealing shiny shit, but never stones. Come on. Who wants to carry a bunch of stones? Um, <clears throat> though Hansel and Gretel knew not why. At the peak of their childhood, a great famine struck the country where Hansel and Gretel lived. It left the rich secluded from the middle, from the midi, middling <clears throat> and poor classes. You know what that means, right? A famine, like everybody was hungry and shit and money wasn't doing that well. The merchant class fought to survive. You know, the people who, you know, own the stores and crap and... Okay, the merchant class fought to survive. And the poorest of the poor plummeted into utter starvation. The woodcutter and his wife, along with Hansel and Gretel, those were their kids, eventually struggled to stay fed. Shit, they didn't even have fucking dry noodles. The reoccurring moments of starvation gradually caused the woodcutter's wife to choose selfishness. Hmm. Come on, who wouldn't give up their their life for their kids? What if I got coffee on my fucking lips? Looks like I've been eating caca. Okay. Uh okay, so she chose selfishness. So selfishness, not selflessness. That's the opposite. One evening after Hansel and Gretel had been tucked in bed, the woman approached her husband, their mom, the bitch. Well, come on. We must survive the upcoming winter. We must, she started. We cannot feed everyone in this small house. What the fuck? Uh, we must survive the, um, okay, we cannot, the woodcutter asked, well, what are we to do? We must leave the children alone in the wooded forest. 
What a bitch. <laughs> that way, we will only have to feed ourselves, she replied. What the fuck? That's fucked up. <laughs> if we leave them there, they will surely starve, he cried. And if we keep them here, we will all surely starve, she replied. What the fuck, really? I mean, pff, she was probably like, what, 10 years, 15 years younger than me and shit? Come on, she led a full life. Fucking feed the children, and fucking you die of starvation. What the hell? Let them have a future. You know what I mean? I bet she had a few pounds on her. What the fuck? She could stand to fucking eat, not eat for a couple of weeks. The longest I went without eating was uh, a couple days over three weeks. <sighs> mm. And I had to relearn how to walk that time too. Okay, well anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. Okay. I'm going to try to stay focused. Stay focused, Garcia. Damn, look at that. I got coffee. Okay. Uh, and if we keep them here, we will all surely starve, she replied. Little did the woodcutter and his wife know. Hansel and Gretel had been listening to their whole conversation. You know what? I never read that part, but then again, different people that, that write it write different shit. Our mother does not want us anymore, Gretel wailed. Our mother does not want us no more, Gretel wailed. Shh, Gretel. Father will not allow her to get rid of us, Hansel replied, attempting to calm Gretel down. Mm. Oh, but what will father do once we are left alone with our mother, Gretel asked. Isn't it always the female? I think it through, he replied. Now Hansel was very smart. His plans of action were always calculated and efficient. The next day, before they were ordered to start on the household chores, Hansel ran half a mile down to the lake. He gathered dozens of skipping stones. See, this is not how I fucking read it in books and learned it for my kids. They had bread in my stories. <coughs> when he returned home, Hansel could see that his mother and sister were packing up for what looked like a normal journey into the woods. Hmm. Though Hansel knew that this time their mother had different plans for them. That's fucked up. You have to be suspicious of your mom and think, man. He held his sack of skipping stones tight as he approached his mother. Times are rough, my dear children. We must venture into the forest to help your father with his work, she declared. <laughs> but, both the children started, no buts, their mother scolded. No buts. And so Hansel, Gretel, and their mother journeyed into the thick, the thick wooded forest. It was an eerie. It was an eerie as thick fog. It was as eerie as thick fog on a stormy night. The sky was a dark gray, and the trees were black and gloomy. Luckily, Hansel had remembered to drop the shimmering stones on the ground every few feet so they could follow them back to their return back on their return home Hansel what is that you think you're up to their mother shouted impatiently mother mother look at those squirrels in the tree i swear they are dancing as if they are fit for the ball <sighs> Distractions. 
Gretel called, using her quick witted her quick wit in order to distract her mother. <coughs> I always get distracted. I don't focus. Okay. Where? I see no squirrels. I see no dancing, their mother exclaimed. Now confused and distracted, giving Hansel time to catch up. Oh, hurry on up. We need to travel a little bit further, their mother grumbled. Where are we going, mother? Hansel asked. With no response, the children's worst nightmares were confirmed. Ow. Motherfucker. Their mother was going to leave them in the forest. Hansel dropped another rock. Gretel heard it fell, fall. They traveled for a while. Hansel occasionally dropped stones until they reached a small clearing. Their mad mother ordered Hansel and Gretel to sit on a dead log. You know, one that's no longer attached to the tree. That's just there. It's a dead. I am going to gather wood. Stay here and I will come back for you shortly, she said. The children stayed seated. Reluctantly. He cried to Gretel, What if we are attacked or eaten? What about wolves, bears, cougars, raccoons? Gretel, oh Gretel, what are we to do? I will feel it out, she replied. Getting up from the dead log, she took Hansel's hand and the two followed his trail of stones. Their flat surfaces shimmered in the moonlight. Hansel and Gretel finally arrived back home at break of dawn. Ooh, what? This isn't... Mm. However, they were so tired, they both immediately fell asleep right in front of their cottage door. They awoke, tucked in their beds, to the sounds of the woodcutter and his wife arguing. How could you leave our beloved children in the forest, all alone? They heard their father ask sadly. Shit, I'd be fucking yelling. Um, when it comes to kids, mm -hmm. um, we will, we will all starve if they stay here. You know what? Mm -hmm. Fuck that. She's, to her kids, shit, he should fucking kick her ass out of the house and fucking put her on the track. You know, that's the old, oldest fucking profession and shit. Fuck that. Fuck kicking the kids out. Kick, kick, kick her out. One less mouth to feed. That equals two kids. Her appetite, probably, right? Okay. I'm not focusing. Okay, okay. There are too many mouths to feed and not enough food. It is the only way. The only way, she replied. Now Hansel and Gretel surely knew their luck was over. Hansel tried to think of a way to get the two of them out of this mess. He looked all over in search of their skipping rocks. Soon, they were nowhere to be found. What? Hold on. Since they were nowhere to be found, Hansel figured the mischievous bird had stolen them all. Okay. Hopeless, Hansel and Gretel went back to their beds and waited for their mother to come and take them to the forest. Damn. Sure enough, the woodcutter's wife made her way up to their room to retrieve them. She ordered Hansel into his walking boots and Gretel into her washing clothes. Off they went once more. Before they left, however, the woodcutter secretly slipped Hansel a small loaf of bread. See, that's the way I heard it. <sighs> Hansel saw the look of despair in his dear father's face. Hansel slipped the bread in his pocket, crushing it into mostly crumbs, and sadly followed behind his mother and beloved sister. Every few weeks, every few weeks, every, every few feet, he dropped these breadcrumbs on the ground. Soon their mother grew suspicious of Hansel. Hansel, what is that you think you're up to? She shouted. What is that you think you're up to? She shouted. Gretel, hearing this, 
quickly came up with a way to distract her. Mother, mother, a wild forest fairy just flew into your hair. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm sorry, bitch. That was a big-ass mosquito. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, panicked, Hansel and Gretel's mother began to shake and squirm. She disheveled her hair and screeched with fear. This gave Hansel time to catch up. You children will be the death of me. Hurry along now. Now, their mother grumbled. They traveled for a few more miles until they came to a very small clearing. Even smaller than the previous. I am going to find a good place to chop wood. Both of you stay put. You want to hear the rest or not? 